Welcome back everybody, Joe with Forged here, just doing our second part of our video series documenting how we put together our drag car. What I wanted to share with you today is uh, the roll cage that uh, we put in it that's a 25.5 certification. It's good to 750 ETs. Uh, like I mentioned in our previous video, I didn't want to sacrifice on safety and be the lightest car in our class. I wanted to have the lightest car in the class and meet all of the safety requirements. So we uh, did a quite a bit of work to make sure that the cage was done properly, that we had fire suppression, parachute, window net, you know, you name it. If it is something that would make the car safer to drive, we put it in the car. And we'll cover some of those other systems in future videos because we've uh, done quite a bit of work actually, but I want you guys to see what the cage looks like and how much work actually went into it. You know, when I first decided to put a cage in the car, I had done some roll bar work and some, you know, four point cages, did one six point cage, but I've never done anything like this with a funny car hoop and basically monkey bars in a car. So I had solicited some help from a uh, local guy, Will Brown. He had stopped in our shop. I'd see some of his work and he was really good and uh, one of the stipulations was is that hey if I'm gonna have you uh, help me put the cage in I want to help you do it because I wanted to learn so I spent about a month of, at his shop putting the cage in and you know at that point you know, unfortunately tragedy struck and Will Brown passed away and uh, out of respect for him and his family I'll leave you know the details of that out but if we're um, regards to the vehicle it was about halfway finished and I had to uh, pick up the car bring it back to forged and finish the work and had to cut some of the work out because it didn't fit my body properly due to the rules requirements you know there's a few things that we decided the seating position wasn't quite right and when I moved that the the funny car hoop was basically needed to start over and that was no fun cutting out that much uh, cage work in a car so I've gone through the ringer on this cage I've probably got over 200 hours of work into it so let's show you what we did now it's probably easiest to start off looking through the passenger side to give you a better idea of how much work goes into putting one of these cages in you can see all these bars here meet the requirements. I know a lot of guys are able to work around some of the rules in the SFI book, but uh, we went ahead and put every bar that uh, was described in there. The floor has a few extra bars for triangulation, and then, you know, coming around to the back, looking into the back here, we really only required to do the two down tubes in the cage but those were one of the ones that uh, after doing a little more digging on the rule book that style of tube the length of it was a little too long for the diameter of the tube so to meet the rules requirements we had to add the cross brace in there and hey anything that's going to make this cage a little bit more structurally sound I'm all for it and then we move around to the funny car portion of the cage this was probably the most challenging because we had put it in once and I had to cut it out because it wasn't forward enough on the head and the bars up top were just a little too close to my head when I uh, had the helmet on so I had to basically start over and cut it all out and I made that portion of the cage 25.3 certified so that's one's good to 650 so knowing how painful it was to cut it out I just went ahead and made that future proofed and then working around up to the top the crossbar that's really one of the only things about this cage that is limiting it to that 25.5 cert that needs to be an X brace to be 25.5 and the gussets up in the corners you can see there are supposed to be tubular not plate steel, but plate steel is fine for the 25.5 cert, which is the 750s. As 
you can see up top there that's where we decided to put our parachute release it is uh, the most natural position for me is to just reach up and slap it forward and then same thing for the fire suppression that's the most natural spot for me to work it and I know a lot of people who have driven cars with this style cage that's where typically the fire suppression is mounted right there so you just reach up along the bar and pull it forward and uh, if you're on fire hopefully it puts it out quickly now we mounted the fire bottle in the rear all the lines run forward uh, we got lines up in the engine bay lines in the battery box where a lot of the fuel system is housed and we also have uh, lines going over to the driver's foot well let's go around to the other side of the car so you can see how it looks like through the driver's door all right now we're looking at it from the driver's standpoint one of the biggest things we wanted to make sure was we could get in and out of this car pretty easily. Now, I'm not a small guy. I'm 6'2", 250, hoping to drop a few more pounds here. But uh, needless to say, if we have a problem and we need to get out of this thing, I wanted to make sure it was easy to get out of. So we made all the bars go as low as possible and still meet the requirements. We also, with the um, window net... We bent it in such a way that when it flips out, it curves down and allows you to get in and out of the car without that being an obstruction. We've got the uh, additional floor work here, uh, and we decided to use an aluminum panel to raise up the floor. Because so with the GTR, uh, if you guys are, have ever had the interior out of your car, the seating and everything is raised up pretty high. There's a bunch of foam padding and electronics underneath the floors of the cars. And when you uh, try to turn it into a race car, that becomes an issue because you need the floor to still be raised up enough to reach the pedals and everything. So that was our solution, was to build some additional flooring, made it out of aluminum to make it fit in there. You can see the fire nozzle for the driver's foot well as well. And to show you guys the trunk as well, there's quite a bit of work that was done in the trunk to properly mount the fuel cell. And we decided to do the parachute mounted directly to the mounting plates at the back of the cage, triangulate it out and out to our own in-house parachute mount that we made we also added the firewall because we have a fuel system in the trunk no longer have the factory gas tank we still need to seal up the bottom there but uh, just a few little minor details to complete in the trunk we also built some provisions right here for our uh, breather system that's currently mounted under the car it works but uh, we want to get it up into the trunk and make it a lot easier to service so we kind of added a few things for future proofing of the of the car all right guys hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight into what goes into a 25.5 or you know a 25.3 cage for a gtr there's uh, quite a bit of work to get something like that put in there but i think people are starting to realize that uh, we need to get the cars as safe as possible. These, they're starting to go extremely fast. You know, 200 mile an hour and a quarter mile is starting to become uh, not that surprising. And without all the safety gear in there, it's pretty scary. So hopefully uh, this gave you some insight, and we'll see you on the next video.